everybody, and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43, and tonight we are back in the breast. And I'm going to show you the first ever game that I played in the ship. Uh, mainly due to the fact that I am in a bit of a time crunch and I don't have time to record a new game. But uh, this is still a fun game that I think you guys are going to enjoy. And uh, don't forget, this is the breast before it's even fully upgraded. So it's a rare treat on the, the Spartan Elite channel to see me play ships that aren't fully upgraded and kitted out to the best of their abilities. Uh, this, is, this has been a, a pleasant experience so far, playing the breast. And uh, I hope that you guys will see that this is not a bad ship. I know there's been a lot of, a lot of hate out there for the breast already. And personally, I just don't understand it. But it just fits my playstyle. And I've talked about this before, like, not every ship is going to fit every person. Like, it's okay. Like, and, and that's the thing. Like, you, you guys out there that love the Bismarck, I know there's a lot of you out there that just absolutely love the Bismarck. You guys do well in the Bismarck. Um, but at the end of the day, not every ship fits every player. Uh, and that's okay. And so this is a prime example. Like, I think the breast fits my play style extremely well. It's very good at being fast to get it to very strong positions that we can hold and defend against the enemy. Set up those crossfires that I love so much. Uh, I, I really do enjoy the breast for that reason. Um, is it the best ship in the game? Absolutely not. I've never claimed that that's the case. But in terms of being able to maneuver around the map, get to where you need to get to quickly, put yourself in positions that are defensible and capable of delivering those really nasty hits to anybody who underestimates the ship, I really do enjoy it. Uh, this plays like a, a heavy cruiser from the Americans, in my opinion. Uh, if you enjoy the Des Moines, if you enjoy the Balti, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you can get those things into positions that are very, very aggressive and then just deal with people that are trying to push you out of those positions. Uh, the only downside is obviously you just don't have the DPM. But what you lack in DPM, you make up for in those alpha strikes when somebody makes those big mistakes. As we showed in the short, as we showed in the video, the original video of the breast, when the Veneto came around the corner, we caught him off guard. He wasn't ready for us to be there, ready to take advantage of it. And we deleted him with one salvo from the front guns. Uh, that is the positioning that you want in the ship. You want to be able to anticipate what the enemy is doing. Put yourself in a position where you can take advantage of those mistakes. Uh, you've got to be one step ahead. You can't be slinging this thing from 19 kilometers, okay? Uh, you want to be up close and personal. Now here, you're going to notice that the Kagero is actually getting spotted by our destroyer. Our destroyer is a Friesland, and there's a Z-44. These are both torpedo destroyers, right? And it's a Friesland, which is a pure gunboat in its purest form. Uh, but he smokes up to try to, like take some of the firepower off of him, which I understand, but I don't understand. Uh, there's no reason for him to stop here. Put it, him stopping in the smoke screen, A, he loses the ability to see them, obviously, unless they get within sonar distance of him, which the Friesland has extended sonar hit, and props to this Friesland. I don't know if the Kagero was beached and he recognized it, but props to him. Not only did he manage to smoke up and take the fire off of him, but he continued to shoot the guy in his smoke screen and, and finish him off. Now, obviously, I'm spotted here, and this is where I feel like the Friesland should uh, should take the initiative. Now, we know there's a battleship over here. He just gets spotted. It's a constellation. That's terrifying for the Friesland because it's a radar. We know this. Uh, understanding what ships have radars, what ships have sonars, uh, you know, putting yourself in positions to avoid getting absolutely annihilated by them is a big deal. But, in my opinion, Everything that this Friesland did really well initially with getting rid of the Kagero, he's actually going to throw away here for no reason. He should be pursuing that destroyer. The Friesland's number one priority should be to kill other destroyers. Uh, that is your number one goal in life, is to just go over and kill destroyers. I'm getting into the cap. He doesn't need to get into the cap. I understand his, his thought process of trying to make sure we get the cap, that's great, but there's no reason for him to join me in the cap. We would have gotten this cap. The only person that can stop us is the Constellation, and he's quite a ways out from being able to stop me from getting this cap. 
Um, so with that in mind, we're going to focus on our crossfires. Getting into the alpha cap here, and we're looking at these crossfires that are set up because the enemy is pushing. These are where you really need to, to um, take advantage of these situations. Uh, you don't want to chase people around the map on this flank. If you get to this side, you want to you want to put yourself in a position where you have these crossfires. This Siegfried is stuck. This is the the definition of a crossfire. If he bow tanks me, he's broadside to the other people. If he brought if he's bow into them, he's broadside to me. This is what a crossfire is, folks. For those of you who don't know, understand what a crossfire is, this is what we're talking about. Putting yourself in a position where the enemy is forced to give broadside to somebody. Whether it's you or your teammate, it doesn't matter. You're not always going to benefit from the, the crossfire. Sometimes it's your teammates. A lot of times I'll get into a fight where I get a flank and the enemies all will sit there and bow tank me. But look at this shot on the Musashi. Citadeling a Musashi from this range with a cruiser is hilarious. All right. This is exactly what we're talking about with the, the breast alpha strike potential. Like it's not a joke. Uh, and now, obviously, we need to think about the fact that we know the constellations here. We've got the cap, the crossfires, they're behind islands, and sure enough, look who it is. It's almost like we knew he was coming, right? This is why you just got to be one step ahead. You, you've got to be in a situation where you know what's happening around you, and you can plan for it, and have that timer in your head going at all times whether it be counting the, the seconds in your head of a battleship shooting. Uh, you know that most battleships are anywhere from 25 to 30 seconds in terms of their reload. So uh, trying to have that in your head at all times of, okay, this is about how much time I have. Can I get a broadside off here or am I likely to get ba uh, smashed for it? Should I wait until they fire again and then go out and get my broadside? Obviously, with the, the breast, we don't really have to worry about that. Now, here you can see the destroyer is still trying to target us. Uh, obviously, Constellation is as well, but we're not staying, you know, we're not staying still. We're not making ourselves an easy target. Constellation is fully capable of being a nasty battleship. We know this. I know it's a battle cruiser technically, but she is a very, very accurate battleship. And so leaving yourself open to that, and that's the Constellations Torps too. So this player has demonstrated that they are not only capable of uh, being able to engage and utilize terrain, but they are also fully aware of the fact that they, they can use their torpedoes. So this becomes a much more dangerous Constellation because a lot of people forget they have torpedoes on the Constellation. But uh, unfortunately for the Constellation, they find themselves once again in a crossfire. Are they going to bow tank me? Are they going to bow tank my teammates that are over there next to the island? They actually decide to turn away. Uh, this isn't the worst decision they could make because of one reason. Well, two reasons, really. They have two torpedo launchers on the back of their ship, and you can see I'm immediately turning towards the island to try to dodge the incoming torpedoes. I know what this guy's doing. I'm not a moron, right? We, we've been here. We know what he's doing when he turns the kite. He's trying to get his torpedoes off. The Constellation goes full broadside, and we're able to smash him again, and this guy's only got so much longer to live. Uh, we've taken everything from him. Now, here's where I make a mistake, and I turn back away, expecting the torpedoes to be launched on the direction that I was going to, and uh, he actually anticipated the turnout here, and uh, has the torpedoes, or he just simply waited, and the torpedoes were launched, and we're, I believe, going to eat one torpedo here. So... Unfortunately, we did lose, and there it is. Uh, we That was a widespread launch, and it was a well-placed shot by him. But uh, we do lose one of our, our ships here, and it was the cruiser, of course, because why wouldn't it, right? Um, cruiser goes down, and now, obviously, their Z-44 is here. We know the Z-44 is here, and here is where I actually make a bit of a mistake. I initially thought, okay, Z-44 really hasn't shown that he's capable of thinking and breathing at this point. He's kind of played passively gone around the edges of the map he's hiding in a smoke hiding behind islands unfortunately our friesland goes and fights a, a fight with a wichita i don't need to explain why that's a terrible idea uh, but z44 surprisingly does not sit in the smokes waiting for it uh, he actually gets out of his smoke and that becomes a big threat to me because i have no counters to him i don't have sonar i don't have radars i have nothing Right? I'm essentially a battleship at this point. So rather than chasing down a destroyer who is likely to torp me, remember German torpedoes tend to reload pretty quickly, and the Z-44 in particular has pretty nasty torpedoes, so we don't want to really sit there and take, take hits from that. 
Um, so rather than sit around and wait for that, we turn back. Now, because of that, this destroyer is actually going to spend a pretty sizable amount of time uh, shooting us in the open water, and there's really not a whole lot I can do about it. I have committed to trying to win this match. The destroyer isn't the key to winning this match. The key to winning this match is putting myself in a position to continue the crossfire that we have set up. Uh, we have a battleship that has gone into Alpha, so he's got one position. We are off to the right of him, and so we are in a... Oh my god, hello Musashi. And unfortunately we had HE loaded because we were anticipating the shot at a destroyer, so we immediately start loading the AP after we shoot the HE. Uh, we don't get the fire, of course, and that's why I always say that the HE is not the way for the breast. If you're shooting a lot of HE in the breast, you're probably going to be disappointed. So AP whenever possible. Okay, uh, fortunately our destroyer managed to torp the uh, Musashi, and so this game is coming down to the wire. Now we have a huge point to, points advantage. There's no reason for me to be really pushing in here. Unfortunately our battleship to my left is going to get himself into trouble. We anticipate the torpedoes and change course, just like we do in our battleships. Uh, and unfortunately we managed to once again just put ourselves in the perfect position to catch one more. If I'd have just stayed with that turn just a little bit longer instead of getting impatient and trying to put myself in a position to counter these guys push across the center of the map, I would have dodged all of those torps, but I cut back in and I dodge or I eat one of the torpedoes. And as we shown, the torpedoes are nasty on the, the Z44. Now you can see there is a Suja out there, so I am I am content with letting the Suja try to deal with the destroyer. Now my my rate of fire is terrible. My rate of turning the turrets is awful. So trying to turn and shoot at a destroyer, even at short range like this, is just not in the realm of possibility for me. Or at least it's not the best possible use. So here instead, I'm just going to take the damage. Like, I've already pretty much guaranteed what I want to do in this, uh, this match to finish this off. And that is simple. Uh, my goal is to shoot the second, uh, the second cruiser over here and then kill the destroyer, or kill the cruiser, then the alpha cap. Now, I was hoping that our cruiser, or our battleship would be able to kill that, that cruiser, but the cruiser that's there is the Wichita, and the one that's not there is the Charles Martel. So, from here, my goal is simple. I'm going to shoot the Charles if I get the opportunity, and I'm going to go kill the Wichita. There's no, no pass and go, no collecting $200. That will guarantee us the win. There are three minutes left. If we can stop him from capping that base, and force it down to a low health Charles Martel and a destroyer that's not willing to try to capture a base at any point during the match, then our chances of winning just went through the roof. So despite losing a lot of health to this destroyer uh, and trying to get rid of this Charles Martel and just unfortunately falling short, we are now in a position where it is us versus the Wichita and uh, this is a fight that most of the time you are you would lose but there was never a moment in my uh, going into this cap where I had anything else on my mind but killing this Wichita no matter what no matter what now you'll see he's bowing he knows that I don't overmatch him he has a 27 millimeter bow we do not have 16 inch guns so what is the option here folks simple ramming I've always said there is a time and a place to ram, and this is a prime example of clearing a very strong radar cruiser off the map who has the potential to capture a base and potentially swing the tide of battle by killing our destroyer and our cruiser. Getting him out of here guarantees that we are going to win this match, unless our teammates completely throw. And that's still not out of the realm of possibility. Let's be 100% about that. The Suja has somehow lost all of his hit points against the Z44. Uh, despite that the Wichita and the Charles have not been able to engage him. So that doesn't give me the, the highest amount of confidence here with him. But we still have our destroyer. We still have this guy. And as long as these guys don't do anything crazy, we should win this match. We have all the caps. We have guaranteed that we win this match in the shortest amount of time possible. Uh, there's a minute left and all we have to do is survive to win. So 130,000 damage, two kills. We did get a uh, assist cap. We've done everything that we can. He's putting out feeler torps. I don't have a problem with zoning torps here. Just trying to throw torps out there and hope for the best. Don't have a problem with that, but uh, you can see that he's never going to hit this destroyer unless he shoots his guns. And hitting a destroyer with a light cruiser at range is actually pretty impressive because the shells take a while to get there. 
Um, and our destroyers doing the right thing and just running away. Don't fire your guns. You're low health. This guy can easily gun you down. You can see the torps launch. We're on target. So uh, the Suja, all he has to do is turn away, and this is a win. So what what I want you guys to take away from this is not just about the Brest being a good ship for getting into specific positions, but also paying attention to what's going on around you, anticipating when and where people will show up, and being able to uh, make the most out of every single engagement with your positioning. Um, that is That is what a lot of people struggle with. So try to look for those positions where you're getting those crossfire shots and you will enjoy it more often than not. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below if you guys agree, if you disagree. 130,000 damage. Second on the team with the Z44 coming in tops, uh, but 2,579 base XP, our first ever game in the breast. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.